Hello and welcome. So there is important updates in the, the Q&A published by European Medicines Agency or EMA on the 7th July 2023. So what is the important update and that is related to the question number 10. So the question number 10 is related to the limits applicable for the nitrosamines. And if I want to specifically explain about this update, it is related to the CPCA or categorization of the carcinogenic potency. So if you look at this particular question number 10, EMA has given uh, two different uh, approaches on establishing the acceptable intake. The first one is very simple and straightforward. You can conduct the carcinogenicity study, uh, generate the carcinogenicity database and based on to that understand the TD50. And from TD50, you can extrapolate a concentration which is acceptable intake resulting into a 1 in 1 lakh species or a tumor into 1, lakh one, uh, 1 in 1 lakh species according to the ICH M7 R1 approach. But in case if you do not have the carcinogenicity data and if your compound is new, in that case, the same guidance document talks about the approach B and uh, this is the approach B. If nitrosamine are identified without sufficient substance specific data, means without a carcinogenic data for the newly identified compound, in that case, uh, in that case, the Point number one can be used to define the acceptable intake for such a newly identified nitrosamine compound. The carcinogenic potency categorization approach, which is a CPCA for nitrosamine, should be used to establish the acceptable intake unless other robust data are available that would override this acceptable intake. Now, this uh, categorization approach or carcinogenic potency categorization approach actually talks about the approach which is very similar to the SAR or structure activity relationship approach which is also called as a read across approach and this particular approach is used by the EMA and other regulators also to define the limit of the nitrosamines for which there is no sufficient carcinogenic database available. See, in the first video, I try to explain what is the CPCA. And in this video, we will try to understand how one can define this acceptable intake based on to the structural differences. What functional groups makes the nitrosamine more potent? Which functional groups can decrease the potency of the nitrosamines? will be the part of this particular video. So let me first bring the presentation on the board now. Okay, I hope you now can see the presentation and that is how to define carcinogenic potency score for a nitrosamine. So how to define the potency? The first one is uh, you must understand the, the structure of any nitrosamine. And there is a N nitroso group attached to the nitrogen. So the carbon which is adjacent to the nitrogen is called as the alpha carbon. And next to alpha, there is a beta carbon. So first understand that what is meant by alpha carbon and what is meant by the beta carbon. You can see into the diagram. Now it is very important to understand in case if there is a hydrogen present onto the alpha carbon that actually increase the potency of your nitrosamine compound and here is the example on the screen now here is the carbon which is the alpha carbon which is just adjacent to the nitrogen and this particular alpha carbon has three hydrogen again there is a similar alpha carbon present onto the another side of the nitrogen and it also carries the three hydrogen atoms so this is going to increase the potency of the nitrosamine. So any nitrosamine containing hydrogen on the alpha carbon is going to be a more potent. More potent means what? It is going to have the lower acceptable intake concentration. Similarly, the methyl group bonded to beta carbon 
also increases the potency of the nitrosamine. Now this is the alpha carbon, isn't it? And this is the beta carbon. And on the beta carbon, there is a methyl group connected. In case if your nitrosamine has the methyl group connected to the beta carbon, then obviously the potency of this particular compound is going to get increased. That means it will have the least amount of acceptable intake value. As compared to if the compound doesn't have this particular methyl group. And this is related to only the beta carbon. Similarly, the aryl group bonded to alpha carbon increases the potency of the nitrosamine compound. Aryl group can be a benzene ring and this benzene ring should be present onto the alpha carbon. In that situation, your potency of the nitrosamine is going to get enhanced as compared to the absence of this particular aryl compound or aryl group. Let us now try to understand which functional groups actually decreases the, the potency of the carcinogenicity and there is a first that is the tertiary alpha carbon. So in case if your nitrosamine compound has this tertiary alpha carbon that actually going to reduce the potency of this nitrosamine. You can see there are you know three carbon connected to this alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon, isn't it? So this is the first carbon uh, connected to the alpha carbon. This is the second and this is the third. So this particular alpha carbon becomes the tertiary carbon and the presence of this tertiary carbon which is should be at the alpha position decreases the potency of the nitrosamine. Again there is a important point to note over here that the presence of hydroxyl functional group that is OS functional groups onto the beta carbon also reduces the potency of the carcinogenicity of the nitrosamine. So you can see this hydroxyl group present onto the beta carbon is certainly going to have the higher amount of acceptable intake as compared to the same compound but with the absence of the hydroxyl group at the beta carbon. Similarly, the carboxylic acid group anywhere on the molecule also decreases the carcinogenic potency. So you can see in the given example that this carboxylic acid functional group is present onto the beta carbon. But is it required to presence of this carboxylic group on the beta carbon? No. Irrespective of its position, if there is a carboxylic acid functional group into your nitrosamine compound, it will certainly have the lower carcinogenic potency and lower carcinogenic potency indicates the higher acceptable intake limit. Similarly, the, the presence of uh, pyrolidine is also going to decrease the potency of your nitrosamine. So N nitroso group in a pyrolidine ring decreases the carcinogenic potency. So this is the structure of uh, pyrolidine and if this uh, nitroso group is connected to the nitrogen from the pyrolidine ring, in that case your carcinogenic potency of nitrosamine is going to get decreased or you will have the higher amount of acceptable intake limit. It is also very important to note that the ring size decreases the potency of the nitrosamine. So bigger is the ring size, the lower is going to be the carcinogenic potency. And here is the example. I have given the uh, ring which is having uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 uh, carbon atoms present into it. So it's uh, going to be having the lower amount of uh, carcinogenic potency as compared to a 5 membered ring or 4 membered ring. So as the number of uh, ring size gets or as the ring size gets increased, the potency of nitrosamine compound gets decreased and the very important point which is the presence of electron withdrawing group so EWG stands for the electron withdrawing group so if the electron withdrawing groups are bonded to the alpha carbon position 
the potency of the nitrosamine gets decreased. Now you can see in the diagram that this amide CONH2 is the amide and this particular amide is connected to which carbon? Look at here, this is the alpha carbon. Alpha carbon means what? The carbon which is just adjacent to the nitrogen. So this is the nitrogen and this is the alpha carbon and the alpha carbon is connected to the electron withdrawing group. Amide is the electron withdrawing group. Hydroxide is the electron withdrawing group. Amine is the electron withdrawing group. So any electron withdrawing group, if it is connected to the alpha carbon position, is actually going to reduce the carcinogenic potency of your nitrosamine. And uh, the last but not the least, it is also very important to understand that the, the chain length on both sides of the nitroso group also helps in decreasing the potency. So how many members this chain has? I think it is a five member chain. It has been given that the chain length should be more than five or equal to five. Five, six, seven member rings, uh, seven member chain is certainly going to reduce the carcinogenic potency of your nitrosamine compound. So this is all about uh, how these functional groups is going to impact onto the carcinogenic potency of the compound. Now the same document which I referred at the beginning of this video has also mentioned in case if there are two nitroso groups present into compound. So how one can define this uh, carcinogenic potency? See for nitrosamines containing two nitroso groups, the group with the highest predicted carcinogenic potency, that is the group with the lowest numerical potency category, defines the acceptable intake for the entire molecule. So in this video, I will not talk about the, the categorization of these nitrosamines. So there are five categories, uh, five, five potency categories defined for the nitrosamine, category 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Category 1 stands for the highly potent nitrosamines with 18 nanograms per day intake. And category 5 talks about the least potent nitrosamine which is having the potency of 1.5 microgram or 1500 nanograms per day as acceptable intake. So in case if you have a two nitroso groups present into compound, now you have to calculate this uh, potency of both the functional groups or both the nitroso groups. Now which nitroso groups gives the least potency number? I mean, which is more potent. So that acceptable intake will be applicable for such a kind of compound containing a two nitroso groups. I think we'll talk about this in much details in the next video. And the second part is for nitrosamines containing more than two nitroso groups, maybe three or four nitroso groups, then the applicant or manufacturer should contact the applicable drug regulatory authority for further guidance. So this is the information provided into this particular EMAS Q&A document published on 7th July 2023. So this is all about, you know, this uh, how to define the potency of the nitrosamines. And in this, uh, in the next video, we will talk about actually how to categorize these different uh, nitrosamines according to the uh, one, two, three or four categories. Thank you so much.